Hello, and thank you for the invitation to present today on behalf of the FIO Pair Alliance. I'm Lauren Fishbein, and I'm terribly sorry I'm not there in person. It's quite unfortunate that after two and a half years of avoiding getting COVID, I got it right before this meeting, and I'm so sorry to miss the meeting. I hope you have a wonderful time. Today, I'm here to talk about patient-centered research and management with FIO Pair Alliance to improve patient care. For those of you who may not have heard about the FIOPARA Alliance, I want to tell you a little bit about it. They have a mission to empower patients with FIOPARA, their families, and medical professionals through advocacy, education, and a global community of support while helping to advance research that accelerates treatments and cures. They were founded in 2007 and are the longest standing and leading organization internationally recognized in advocacy for and awareness of FIOPARA. The FIOPARA Alliance team has two staff members, Stephanie Alband, who's the executive director, and Amy Powell, community engagement specialist. The board of directors is made up completely of volunteer patients and caregivers, as well as the chair of the medical advisory board, Dr. Jacques Lenders. The medical advisory board is made up of volunteer international experts in FIOPARA, and I'm proud to serve as one of those members. The FIOPAR Alliance website has a lot of information for clinicians and researchers, as well as patients. They have many events that they hold, including the International FIOPAR Conference for Patient and Caregivers. There's several patient educational webinars that are recorded, as well as can be viewed live. There are online monthly peer support meetings, patient education materials, and healthcare provider information. There's also information about the new Center of Excellence program. Let me just take a moment to talk to you about that. The Center of Excellence program was developed and managed by the Medical Advisory Board and launched officially in March 2021. There are now 12 centers in the US and the UK. And recently the program evolved to two different levels of designation, Clinical Center of Excellence and a Clinical and Research Center of Excellence. If you or your institution are interested in becoming part of the FIOPAR Alliance Clinical Center of Excellence, please see their website for more information as well as an application. The goal of the FIOPAR Alliance is to create these centers of excellence so that patients have places to go where there are expert team members who are coordinated in their care for FIOPARA and are located in as many locations as possible so patients have options close to where they live. All right, I'll spend the rest of the time talking about the results of the Scan for FIOPARA Patient Experiences Survey, or SCOPE survey, as we call it. Why did the FIOPARA Alliance want to do this survey? They wanted to verify, educate, explore connections, and guide the future path for FIOPARA Alliance, as well as others, to learn more of all of that expressed through the patient voice. We wanted to hear what are the patient needs, concerns, and gaps in care. The survey itself was adapted from an existing survey from INCA, which is the International Consortium for Neuroendocrine Tumors. It was adapted just for FIOPARA based on consultation with the FIOPARA Board of Directors and Medical Advisory Board. The survey was approved by a research ethics board and recruitment was done through social media and through email. In just a few short months, there were 270 respondents to this survey, which is amazing. The respondents were mostly female, well-educated, white, and from urban suburban areas, largely within the United States of America, although about 20% were outside the United States. The median age was 52 years with a standard deviation of 14. Most of the respondents had FIOPARA themselves and some were asymptomatic genetic carriers. Of those who had FIOPARA themselves, we asked where was the location of their tumor. About a third had pheochromocytoma, either unilateral or bilateral. About a third had head and neck paraganglioma, and about a third had tumors in other locations. We then asked if they dealt with primary or metastatic disease. About two thirds of the respondents had no metastatic disease, meaning they just had primary FIOPARA diagnoses. 
about 12% of respondents had metastatic disease. And several respondents did not answer the question. We then asked about genetic testing. To our surprise, 78% of the respondents had clinical genetic testing performed, which is fantastic. Of those, 60% had known Pheopara susceptibility gene pathogenic variants identified, and the vast majority were in SDHB and SDHD, which is not surprising. Many of the respondents experienced delay in diagnosis. The median time from the first symptom to diagnosis was reported as 29 months with an interquartile range from 6 to 73. Almost half of the respondents saw four or more healthcare providers before being diagnosed with Pheopara. This tells me we have a long way to go to educate our colleagues in primary care and other specialties who may not be expert in Pheopara about Pheopara because our patients are going through a lot in order to get their diagnoses. Almost half of the patients received one or more initial misdiagnoses. One of the respondents wrote, misdiagnosed many times, which caused the tumors to grow too large. The most common misdiagnoses are shown here that the patients reported, anxiety, depression, irritable bowel syndrome, diabetes, hypochondria, that one really tugs at my heartstrings, to be honest, thyroid disorder, menopause, neuropathy, and several others. Many of the respondents reported difficulties with care. About a third of the respondents reported access was lacking to an experienced medical team and lacking to relevant information. They also reported poor communication among specialists. 23% had to travel more than 100 miles to be treated by a specialist, and 36% had to travel more than 50 miles. Most preferred to make decisions with their Team, medical team about their healthcare in partnership. So this is really important to keep in mind when we're counseling our patients about options for their medical care. They really want it to be a partnership, not being told or dictated what to do. Many of the respondents felt they weren't taken seriously. I'm going to re read to you now some of the quotes from the respondents in the survey. It is so rare, no one believes it. So I had to do all my own research and fight to get tests. Doctors are not listening to patients. Assume we are wanting unnecessary tests. Assume the patient knows nothing or think we are just Googling stuff. Doctors just did not believe me, even with my blood and urine tests. Was told it was impossible for me to have it. 75% of our participants identified the following as very or extremely important. They felt it was very or extremely important to have more knowledgeable healthcare providers, better access to experts and medical centers, more information themselves about Pheopara, and better, better medical team coordination. This is really not that surprising to the Pheopara Alliance, and it's why the Pheopara Alliance is creating the Center of Excellence program to have centers which patients can reach out to that have better medical team coordination and knowledge about Pheopara. When asked about sources of support, the participants res responded or rated many different aspects of support as extremely or very helpful. These include paid caregivers and healthcare professionals, family members and significant others, as well as medical journals and educational webinars. Our patients are educated. They want to know about their disease to better advocate for themselves and others. They also rated extremely or very helpful patient support groups and social media interactions. We asked questions about financial toxicity. For example, in the last year, how much have health-related expenses to Pheopara presented a financial difficulty for you. And over 35% reported moderate to severe financial difficulty. Now remember, only 12% of our respondents have metastatic disease. So the majority of these respondents here are reporting based on just primary tumor diagnoses. So this is really important financial toxicity to consider when we're thinking about expenses for our patients. 
Our study had some strengths and weaknesses. The strengths are that this is a patient initiated and designed survey with just some input from experts. It was specific for Fiopera. There are very few of those in the literature, if any at all that are specific just for Fiopera. There's a large sample size for this tumor type. There were some limitations. It's a restricted sample, mostly white females in the US. And there are many topics that weren't covered such as quality of life and coping mechanisms. The conclusions from this survey are that delays, misdiagnoses, and treatment inaccessibility are common and contribute to distress. We can learn so much from our patients as we design surveys in the future, as well as clinical studies and patient care. I want to spend some of the last few minutes reading to you some other quotes from patients that they put at the end of the survey. I think they're really instructional as we think about caring for our patients, as well as designing future research projects and thinking about the topics we're going to hear the rest of this uh, conference. It has been very challenging advocating for myself and pushing doctors and medical team to order the proper tests. There are symptoms I've experienced post-surgery and post-treatment that doctors don't have an explanation for. Since functional glomus jugulari tumors are rare, it is difficult to find recent studies that provide outcomes and longevity. The results of many studies are inconsistent and differ from one another. It is difficult to find someone to trust. Medical staff do not respect or acknowledge the knowledge of Fiopera patients. We have become experts in this field in order to navigate the lack of knowledge and care that the medical staff have. When I found out I had a glomus tumor, I didn't know who to talk to. No one had heard about this type of tumor, not even my doctors. I felt so alone. It sucks. Needs to be more awareness of the mental health impact of this disease also has on both patient and family. Everyone is always a, excuse me, everything is always a fight with Fiopera, no matter what country you are in. Tests take a long time to come back. Doctors don't listen to us and dismiss half our symptoms. There is a real lack of answers on preventative protocol for my three children that I have passed the genetic mutations to. My biggest concern is the fear of recurring paraganglioma and how to treat it if and when this happens. I work four jobs because I cannot afford to quit, cannot work full time and do not qualify for social security benefits unless I quit working up to a year. Can't quit because I have bills to pay. There is no financial help from anyone. I am continuously saddened by the lack of clarity and info on head and neck paras. It seems there is a focus on just hormonal tumors and evidence seems to suggest my head and neck tumors are relatively harmless. From my experience and my family's, this is untrue. I lost hearing, had a facial paralysis, have intracranial hypertension, nerve damage and damage from treatments. My cousin had her carotid torn and ended up in the ICU. I wish there was a better focus on the risks associated with head and neck paragangliomas instead of the continued messaging that they are mainly asymptomatic, especially on the pheoparasite. My family and I feel very lost. There's a lot of information in these quotes I just read to you, things we can think about as we're planning our future studies, focus on head and neck pheopara, excuse me, head and neck paraganglioma, focus on outcomes from surgery, focus on the financial toxicity and advocating with our governments and our medical systems and payers. There's a lot we can take away from these surveys as well as these quotes from patients. Now there were some positives, especially comments about the Fiopara Alliance. Patients and caregivers are very thankful for the education opportunities and awareness. Some quotes include, Thank you for continuing to raise awareness. My wife and I don't feel alone when we visit the Alliance group page for information and guidance. Praying there will be more education done in this area to help me and others moving forward. Thanks for all you do. Thankful, thank you for your work and service. I attended one of your webinars with a medical doctor specialist presenting and found it extremely informative. Thank you. The Fiopara Alliance has been a tremendous resource for me and my family. It has been a challenge to get answers and direction. So few experts. So where do we go from here? 
Again, the Field Pair Alliance Center of Excellence program it is built to try to identify clear information for patients on where to gain valuable multidisciplinary expert care. There are 12 centers so far, 10 in the U.S. and two in the U.K. There are two other centers in the U.S. being approved currently. If you and your institution are interested in applying, please see the Field Pair Alliance website for the application process. In terms of the survey, the Field Pair Alliance hopes to share the survey results with patients, healthcare providers, and researchers in the coming months. We want to incorporate findings into future research projects help guide the Field Pair Alliance strategic plan, and they hope to repeat the survey with more diverse sample and additional questions, and hopefully got, this can guide future surveys that will focus on healthcare providers, caregivers, and patients. I wanna thank you for your time and attention, again, on behalf of the Field Pair Alliance. I can't be there, obviously, to answer any questions, but the executive director, Stephanie Alband, and the chair of the medical advisory board, Jacques Lenders, are there. Please find them at any time to ask them questions about the Field Pair Alliance or the survey or gaps in the area from a patient point of view that hopefully we as experts in the field can address in the future. Thank you again for your time.